Brett Barron, it's great to have you with us. Thanks for the brewery, fresh, Carlton Ruff. Magnificent show ahead tonight. Loads to get through. Jeff Kennett is going to join us on the show. His Hawks have taken off. Wayne Schwoss, one of the greats from the Kangas and the Swannies, to join us as well. We've got a lot to discuss. I'm here with a couple of the great men in the world of football to do it all with. Lovely to see you both. It's wonderful to be here. Also, just a big thank you to all our viewers who've uh, stayed up um, and um, got through another wonderful episode of America's Got Talent. Um, I just wanted to say, we're in Victoria. What time's that? What time's lockdown tonight? Uh, that would be eleven fifty-nine. So in about twenty minutes. <laughs> right. No worries. No, no worries. So, hey. Look, yeah. 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 Some of the shout roll will notice that he's not Mick Malloy. It's Andy Lee. Yes. Yes. Give us yes. Yes. Thank you, lads. Again, mate. Yeah, uh, big, big shoes to fill. Big, shoes. Um, big pants to fill as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Mickey has had a huge that's COVID, true. I think. That's true. This, uh, this hydraulic chair has never been so high. <laughs> big shoes, big shoes to fill. If you could be uh, half as funny as you usually are, no-one would be able to tell the difference. So, um, but, yeah, people want to know where Mick is. People want to know uh, where he is. No-one's seen a jawline in this seat for ages. <laughs> Sorry, Mick. Mate, you're I won't be welcome early. back. <laughs> if, Mick's, if Mick's watching at home, he thinks it's a booper ad or something, doesn't it? Mate? Like a younger version. But uh, people want to know, listen, he wasn't feeling well. Uh, oh, right. He went and got tested. Mm -hmm. And um, he has tested positive for gout. <laughs> <laughs> and it, start, it spread everywhere, yeah, by right, the way. Yeah. He, he is officially uh, a hotspot, by the way. He's a walking, talking hotspot. I've um, been saying yeah. all day he had a zinger off the top and it was yeah. worth waiting for. That's, Let's yes. move it along. Right, move right. It along. <laughs> hey, hey uh, we've, got a, we've all got a lockdown to get to. That's yeah. true. Well, we're back in it. I mean, it's remarkable what's happened mm. at footy. And we saw it on the, after the games on the weekend, didn't we? Just how agile and nimble uh, the AFL clubs were. They had to be. We got told that this was going to happen. They're going to have to pivot routinely through this season and we saw them ready to go, didn't we? Yeah. Straight after their games, they headed off with all the essentials and away they went. Oh, they did a good job, didn't they? They, they really got out. Did. I they love really the idea of the, all, the, all the essentials there, <laughs> Mari. I think there was surfboards going in, golf clubs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, golf clubs. Here we go. Here, here's Gripper, I think. Yep, that's yeah, the essentials. That's not a problem. Um, but what, what so it's all the Victorian clubs heading off to, you know, sort of far-flung destinations. What an advertisement, though, for the northern clubs. Mm. I mean, come trade period, they're going to be saying to you, I mean, have a look at, at some of the clubs in action here. We've got the Demons. The, they uh, are... Oh, sorry. Hawks first. First at Coogee. There's the Demons in Manly. Look at that. It's beautiful. And, uh, and I believe we've got Collingwood and the Gold Coast as well. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they, are they, they're no, on the Gold Coast. No, they? they're not. No, no, no. They're in. Uh, they're in Sydney, I think. So. Well, where is everyone? So they're Collingwood and Geelong are in Sydney. Then they take off to Perth next week for their three weeks over there. When do they go to? When do they go back to Daniel Wells' house? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a hub, I would. That'd be a good hub, that one. I think they'll be steering clear from yeah. that for a while. So, Hawthorne, Me Hawthorne Melbourne, uh, the Gold Coast are in various parts of Sydney. They're in right. I think Coogee, the, um, Manly, Wollongong. OK. With um, the, well, the hotel that Melbourne are staying in, they'd be flying their flags at half master. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good point. It's a good point to the Melbourne players. It's not an end-of-season trip, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> yeah, exactly. still got a season to go. Um, St Kilda at Noosa, and there's a lot of... All the other clubs are in uh, various places in the Gold Coast. All those right. hubs and all those locations and still no footy in Tasmania. Well done. Um, I can see why Wollongong... I can see why Wollongong is one of the hubs. Mm. Uh, when you listen to their mayor, it's clear uh, that it's a football town run by a football man. But I understand you get six points for a goal and one for a behind. And uh, there are four quarters and that's about 18 in a team and all the rest. So, uh, yeah, I was quickly across it. <laughs> Gordon he'll Bradbury. On, he'll, who? Gordon Bradbury. Yeah, but he, he'll be on the rules committee with, uh, at that sort of <laughs> so just, level. Just a quick one. If we got tapped on the shoulder by management and said, right, yep. front bar off to hub life, mm. what, what, would you, what would you take? Still side bottom. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I yeah. want to have a good time. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. What would you take at a hub? Um, I don't know, bagpipes or something? It's always a good place to, <laughs> to learn a new instrument. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That'd be yeah. fine. You, Andy? I, yeah. You don't care. I'd take a good book. Oh, gosh. Take a good book. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, bring me side bottom. <laughs> I, uh, I'm less worried about what I'd be taking though, um, but more what I'd be leaving behind. No, I think that's very going to be front of yeah. mind for a lot of the players, yeah. particularly Angus Brayshaw, of course, from Melbourne, after what he got up to in lockdown. 
When the highlight of a 24-year-old AFL star's day is tending to his onions, there's no denying we desperately need footy back soon. One day I'll chop them up and eat them myself and that'll be a good day. <laughs> will be a good It'll day be better than a good day, Angus. Um, <laughs> It'll be a great day. And uh, yeah. you won't believe this, because he's gone away. He has. And these are... What? These are his onions are that no, we've fair. got. Actually, are they really his onions? Absolutely, these are his onions. Can what? you see that? Yeah. Yeah? Hey, oh, 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 oh. hey, careful. Watch the... That topsoil's really important. <laughs> <laughs> Every... Well, thank you, Costa from Gardening Australia. <laughs> there. The... I grew up watching a lot of Alan, Alan Seal, and I know that topsoil for onions is very important. Yeah. Who is Alan Seal? Ah, don't worry. Hey, <laughs> just remember the younger demographic, all right, for once. Hey, um, but... I, I you... think... They are Melbourne onions. They're underperforming. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't look healthy. Um, but they genuinely are Angus They're really Brayshaw's onions. Yeah, right. And he, yeah. had a, he had a... If you don't believe me, he had a message for me to uh, how to take care of them. <laughs> G'day, Sam. Thanks very much, mate, for looking after my onions while I'm away. It's been a lot of blood, sweat and tears from my end to get it to this point. So I hope you take the very best care of them. Well, they obviously mean a lot. Hopefully you've put in some time and effort into learning how to grow onions. Blood, sweat yeah. and tears, by the way, may be one of the reasons they're not growing that well. <laughs> you, just, you just have to... I've done some research. You've you really? just got to yeah. water them. That's all you've got to do. But have a listen to this. While growing onions in pots, uh -huh. you've got to use a lot of water <laughs> and um, uh, you need, they need two to three inches of water a week. Don't water blindly, though. Oh. <laughs> Check the dampness of the soil before watering. Oh. Too much water can be harmful. Well, which one is it, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> Avoid uneven watering, Andy, okay. and reduce watering three to four weeks prior to harvesting the onions. <laughs> now, Angus, these will be dead in a week, mate. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, but I'll do my best. But yes. here they are. Good luck. How do you Thanks. know when they're ready? I mean, do, do, any... Well, it depends if they're a seed or a, a bulb. OK, right. Uh, oh. Don't ask another question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, we'll take the greatest of care with your onions, Angus. You mm. can rest assured. One thing we are learning, uh, it, we, we keep finding out new things in the world as this crazy 2020 goes on, and we discovered this week a new way for players to miss games of footy. Here's the Hawks' new recruit, John Patton. He's not playing against his old side. He was a late withdrawal from the game against North Melbourne last Sunday. Gary Lyon tells me um, he actually burnt his foot cooking. He burnt his... <laughs> is, that le... is that legit? That's fair, Nick. What, he was doing what? Cooking what? He was, he was cooking salmon. Oh, that actually makes sense when you look at the teams list back from last week. Pat... <laughs> <laughs> He's missed two games. Is, missed... is he missing two games because of... Cause of... Cause he cooked with salmon? Correct. Yeah, correct. Had a, a tuna casserole could end his career, by the way. <laughs> um... Everybody knows that salmon cooks hot. Yeah. Mate, it's a, it's a dangerous fish. <laughs> it, the, the, it is. It is. The, the oil can get hot. It really yes. can. Yeah. Um, That's true. <laughs> I'm growing onions. We've got, onions we are, we are onions. like the living room at the moment. We've got gardening <laughs> segment. Now we've got our cooking segment. What the hell is this? That, I'd, I'd be Miguel. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> Jonathan Patton, by the way, uh, continues uh, a rich tradition of footballers and cooking. <laughs> mm. uh, going back to one of our Favorite. It's the great Martin Pike oh. and his recipe for pumpkin soup. Yeah, g'day there. It's Martin Pike from the North Melbourne Footy Club. Um, today I'm going to cook you some pumpkin soup. Yeah, just to start with, um, I have to uh, peel up about four or five carrots. F***ing carrots. <laughs> <laughs> there, was more, Pike, he... there was more life in the potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you could tell, he, he, you know, he, he, you could tell the Piker was pretty happy to be there. <laughs> and more than happy to answer any questions the producer of the segment may have had for him. Fellas, uh, is it important about uh, the way you actually peel these? Oh, you're kidding, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> At least he didn't miss any games. Yeah, no, no, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. more more important than ever uh, as Victorians head into to lockdown this evening will be the Zoom fans. Oh, Obviously, yeah. no play, uh, no fans. Right. Victoria will be able to go yeah, to great. games. Here they are. Yeah. Um, I don't know why Collingwood <laughs> couldn't, couldn't field a full grid of fans there. Maybe someone to hide their identity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for, for obvious reasons. Good right. theory. Yep. But um, <laughs> we thought we'd do the same here at the front bar. Have uh, the front bar Zoom oh, fans. Right here they are. Yep. Now, this is live, everybody. Yep. Uh, a great bunch. Oh, there's Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Wow. Oh, don't turn us off, Mick. <laughs> that is particularly harsh. Good to, um, good, to looking... see, good to see Mick's onions as well. That's, uh, that's <laughs> 
definite theme. It's a bit of a theme going tonight, isn't it? We've got to get to a break. Don't go to G with the Zoom Jeez. fans a bit later on. Jeff Cannon, Hawthorne's president. They've taken off. He's going to join us here next. <laughs> Great to have you with us. One of the great pubs in Victoria, and I'm sure everybody around Australia will know what's going on in uh, the state of Victoria. You've got a couple of hours to get down to your local after, of course, the front bar finishes and uh, celebrate uh, for the first time in a pub for quite some time. Uh, the front bar, send us uh, any feedback you've got for the show. Uh, Sam's all ears. If you've got some tips on how to grow onions, he's very, very keen to find out. Well, speaking uh, of the socials and, uh, and the online followers, we should go back to our front bar Zoom oh, fans yeah, to see what they're up to <laughs> live. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. I've think... got a feeling he might be trying to serenade a girl that's just off camera. There. <laughs> was that try... was he trying to play sexual healing? Was, He's that... Done... <laughs> was that sexual healing? I think it probably was. He's a Do we have the rights for that? <laughs> no, no, he's not allowed to no, play, play that. that. Hey, uh, the game continues to march on in 2020. You always hear the same thing, the game's not as tough as it used to be. Yeah. I, I dispute that. I mean, Sean Attlee, not known for his great physicality, terrific player over 200 games in North, but he threw his body on the line and cleaned up Bailey Smith. That was a solid hit, wasn't it, on the weekend? Mm. <sighs> and I've always said this, it reminds me about great commentary, and I've always said this about the Channel 7. You know what I've said about the Channel 7 oh, commentary oh, yeah, teams? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. an embarrassment. <laughs> of riches. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> so much to choose from, right? right? And I noticed they don't get you to commentate at all. Because you're available, <laughs> aren't you? Uh, Are you available? Well, yeah, I'm going to call for the SEN, so... Yeah, well, just in case you want someone to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I could think about Channel 7. But anyway, the Channel 7 commentary team's great. They're, it reminded me that great analysis and description mm. uh, of the action. It elevates the viewing experience. And that's why Matthew Richardson, one oh, of our favourites... Great. Uh, that's why he's the best. Have a listen to him talk through that hit because he, he just... He reminds you of things that you may have missed mm. the first time you saw it. Mm. Let's have a look at this angle here. Yeah, def there was definite contact. <laughs> yeah. I, not have... yeah, I missed that first. Well, time. yeah, I, I didn't. Obviously, haven't played the game, so I can't see it. But uh... <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be in the arc. It, right? it was pretty slight. It was. So, yeah, you have to say. Yeah, I mean, you're always a student of commentary. You love keeping an eye on what's going on. Well, you wouldn't know this, but the best commentators they uh, don't just call the action. Right. They they ta they give stories. They they're, they're great at stories. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, BT. Yeah. Oh, the my, my old coach, Brian Taylor. He's got the best stories, and I love how he slips him into the coverage. Seamlessly? Seamlessly. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> and that's why it's time to recognise my old coach, Brian Taylor, with this new segment. Oh. Remember the test patterns? Job, you wouldn't have been born then. No. The ABC used to knock off at midnight and throw a test pattern up until 6am and then we'd wake up and the test pattern was still there. <laughs> He's the master. Is that? Is that? He's the master. Well, it's, um, we love you, mate. I oh, know. Our next guest, I'm sure, would remember the test patterns. I'm sure he's a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would. I mean, he's... <laughs> oh, he would. Yeah, I'm sure he'll remember them. And he's, I'm sure he's a big fan of BT. Hawthorne <laughs> President, former Premier of the Great State of Victoria. Please, make a good welcome. Jeff Cannon, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's... I mean, you'd remember the test... I remember the test patterns. So if I remember them, you can remember. you remember what colour they were? Well, that would have been black and white in your day. Well done, yeah, Thank no, you no, much. just checking, just oh, checking. Gee, another, another rib punch. <laughs> <laughs> You'd also be a big fan of Brian's work, wouldn't you, Jeffrey? Oh, wonderful, man, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. But just question, mm. what's the weed? Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, a beer, weed, what are you, oh, no. what are you smoking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for watching too, by the way, this is the first segment. What These are it? Angus Brayshaw's onions. They you... look as though they've been up at the, uh, up at the ski resort. <laughs> they're, they're wilting. They're wilting. Well, are you a green thumb, are you? Oh, yeah. very much so. Yes, really? yes. What sort of onions are they? Oh, the... they're... Um... Brown or uh, green? Dying, dying ones. They're dead ones. 
Thanks. Uh... Have you got any tips for him or not? Like, seriously? Because yeah, you... Angus wants us to... For take... Angus? Well, I yeah. think the most important thing to do is just check them just above the bulb, squeeze them. Mm -hmm. If you get a bit of movement, they're ready for eating. Movement? OK. If... What sort of movement? Well, just a little <laughs> softness in the area, just above the bulb. Well, sorry, please. This, this, yeah. is a... Last this could did... be Angus's future, growing onions, yeah. couldn't it? I'm not going to do that. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Just squeeze them up. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to... already done community service this year. <laughs> but we've been, you know, we know we're dealing with this bizarre season and, and we've been told to you know, pivot and stay agile when we need to and we saw it happen with Victorian teams after the weekends. <laughs> Forty, have the Hawthorne boys settled in up there? Are they settled in up north OK? I think they're in a very difficult environment. I think they're uh, ensconced at Bondi and they're just across the road from the beach, so they're able to run out there and have half an hour exercise in the water. I think they're doing a lot better than if they were placed down here. What would you have thought had a couple of your players said, no, nah, we don't want to go, we've got obvious reasons and important reasons to stay? Yeah, right. it's a tough decision. I mean, there are some who very seriously have family issues yeah. and I don't think you could force them to go. Uh, but I think this is just part of the circumstances and the times. The most important thing is to get the game away. And just even you think about this show, if we didn't have AFL football, there'd be a whole lot of broadcasters, journalists yep. who would have no work. So it's a very big industry. Uh, so we would have taken on board their request, but I think we would have always encouraged them to stay with the team. So if it stays the way it is in Victoria... Yep. ...can you concede that the grand final may not be at the MCG in 2020. Are you ready yes. for that? Yep. Yes, I think that's a possibility. Yep. Particularly if we don't have crowds here. So mm -hmm. we're now locked in till, what, the middle of August? And that's the earliest possible yep. occasion. It could go beyond that. And so, therefore, I think Sydney would be the preferred location. Really? Uh, I think that's what I'm hearing, but keep it to yourselves. Okay, but I think that's what I'm <laughs> you were, um, <laughs> you were In all of this, you were suggesting some kind of relegation theory as well. Oh, was that was, was I? Well, well, oh, yeah, well, were you? Yes. What, 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 what I was can't the theory? remember. When would I have said that? Oh, yeah. I think in the last few months, weren't you? Oh, no, I don't remember what I said yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I I a few months ago. Well, of, 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 what, of what you said, this is the chairman of the Gold Coast Suns, Tony Cochran. Oh, yes. And I, and I want to get the quote up. This is him speaking of you. Oh, was he? He pops up with all these ideas. Here is a comment I've never heard at a president's meeting. Good suggestion, Jeff. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> What's your reply to that? To... Well, the bigger question was, what did I actually say? Well, were you suggesting, and I only know vaguely, but were you suggesting that a team, because we, we, there's not enough money to go around, that if a team underperforms, they're out and out for good? Why does Andy have to defend what you said? <laughs> <laughs> but what's he saying? I've got no idea. No, no, you, look, put out that con I... you did put out that comment. No, no, no. What I said was... You did, yeah. We've got to make sure that all these teams become viable. Okay. And over the next three years, we've got to lift by a certain percentage to be decided the revenue that we can attract, because there are 12 teams that are still solely dependent on the AFL yep. for funding. I'm not saying any should be dismissed, but whether it's a team that's an unassisted team, mm. of the six of us, or an assisted, we've all got to improve over three years the revenues that we can raise ourselves to support our own operations. Mm. And if you can't do that, then surely we've got to be held answerable mm. as a collective group of teams trying to put on a game. What sort of reaction did you get from...? Fairly good. From yeah. Tony was quite good. Yeah, very... <laughs> 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 and T Tony doesn't mince words. No, he does not. I've got you. a very good relationship. Yeah, yeah. Any other Victorian clubs sort of give you a call? Any presidents or...? No, the phone no. didn't ring. OK. What about very... of, of Jonathan Patton? Yeah. Uh, you, oh, yeah. Uh, as a president, what do you say to a star player who's, who's out because of a, a salmon mishap? Yes, well, we're trying to put the fire under all of our players at the moment. <laughs> you would appreciate. I mean, we've had a bad week last week and uh, this week we're up against Collingwood on Friday night. Mm -hmm. So we need to fire mm. them up a bit. So this is... He's just one of many we're trying to now encourage to go that step further. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't agree more. I hear what you're saying. The fish rots from the top. The <laughs> Because you are the president. Good reminder that you are the president. Many people would be viewing, be tuning in now and going, what is he doing here? I know. I know. I ask myself the same thing. <laughs> but, I, you, you know, this is your second stint as president. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It took two years and to you, get another invitation. I've, I've got uh, this research here, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Here that, we that go. You had planned... Actually, I think last time you were on the show, you said this would be the end of your tenure when, when you, you planned to step down at the end of the season. 
but according to you, you've been asked by the club to continue and you're weighing it up. You are the Putin of the horse. <laughs> <laughs> How could you possibly... You, you've always said that you should... You've that got to food. keep moving. You've, you've been to... working hard over the last week, haven't you? Very, very... Well, these onions I, have been neglected. Onions. Yeah. Onions and weed. Uh, you couldn't possibly go on. You couldn't, could you? You really couldn't. You just don't know. Well, I'm trying to catch up to... <laughs> <laughs> trying to catch up to Eddie. Ed, Ed, trying to catch up to Eddie. I mean, what's he done? 20 years? But so why keep saying that this is going to be the end when you just... Well, it is going going to be. The end is coming. It's coming for all of us. You know, one thing... Let's hope we get through (laughs) this. You know, (laughs) one thing that I can never remember being established are your actual football bona fides. I know you love the footy club and you love the game, but did you ever play any footy as a kid? (laughs) Yes, I had a a very good career. I was fortunately in a school where they had... Eight teams, yeah. and I played in the eights. I, played, <laughs> I don't think that's funny. Uh, and I played very well, and I got elevated on one occasion to the fourths. Ooh. I was so excited. I ran out onto the field, collided with someone else, knocked myself off, was taken off the field, and never, ever played football again. So my <laughs> career is still waiting mm. for the moment of opportunity. Never played again, Peggy? It's funny you say that. We've got this footage here. Oh, no. I, I've, I've, you, this is oh, you yeah. uh, in 2010 down in Tassie. And I could say, your skills, you look magnificent with your skills. <laughs> we just say, you, you may have been a touch injury prone, <laughs> <laughs> considering <laughs> that was a result of one drop punt. Yes, yes. What happened? Did you, hurt, did you generally hurt your back then? Well, I, I can't answer that because I don't remember the thing happening at all. You don't I, remember I, much, I think do you? that's something you've put together. You don't remember what you say. You no, 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 there, you it's don't safer. That. I can tell you what. <laughs> so when I appear in court, I do not remember, and I'm on record in many places of saying just that. Well, I do not recall. Well, I don't think we're going to fear 2020 in a hurry. I think there's going to be a lot of things from this year, football season included, that we're going to be remembering and discussing for quite some time. Hopefully we'll get you back at some stage too. Oh, oh, oh. Don't oh, rush oh. into it. Oh, <laughs> There's no need to rush. Are you wrapping him up? Well, yeah, we're going to get real. The, the, yeah. the great man. Yeah. Oh. Last time you were on the show, yeah. it was a pleasure. To, oh, we had a good no. chat. Does this work? <laughs> but one of the highlights for us was oh, this book, that, this collection of prose and verse that you compiled, Dogs Lovers Poems. Dog Lovers Poems, sorry. This is yours, Troy. Thank you very you put much. It through, Thank you. you. Put it, last time Do you I read, remember this? Thank you. You remember this? I can't remember. No. <laughs> <laughs> did it sell on cut? How many of those? Have no idea. Have no idea. Right, okay. no idea. Right. I'm going to read it. Sam, one. there's a phone call for you. <laughs> right. um, last how, how many poems in there, Penny? Too many. <laughs> There's a lot. But what did you read last time? Jealousy I'll, will get you nowhere. I read Absolutely. one. I read one about Chihuahuas. <laughs> right. But this one's called My Doggy. Oh. No. And this is uh, this is because of you. Can I? <laughs> I have a little doggy, who used to sit and beg. Doggy stumbled down the stairs and broke his little leg. Oh, oh doggy, I will nurse you. Try to make you well. You will have a collar on with a little bell. <laughs> when, your le- <laughs> <laughs> when your leg is better, we will run and play. <laughs> we shall scamper around the fields and watch them making hay. <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. You're laughing, you're enjoying the goodness, the quality of that book. Why do you try and put people down the hole? <laughs> what is it about you, sir? This is the what worst is... book in the history of literature. <laughs> <laughs> and you're responsible. Jeff, yeah. thanks for coming on. Good Thank luck you. on Friday night. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pies to your mighty hawkers. Thanks for coming Thank on. Stay well. Good luck with your audience. One of the great wingmen of the modern era going to join us after this. Wayne Swass, up next. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. It is the front bar. We're here thanks to the Brewery Fresh Carlton Draft. Uh, the next bloke who's going to join us on the show was one of the most dynamic wingmen of his era. Three-time best and fairest winner across two clubs. Premiership player, All-Australian. He did just about everything you can do in footy. What a player he was. Please make him welcome. Wayne Schwoss, everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's actually ridiculous, is it not, yeah. when blokes who were elite in their diet come in and you're actually in better nick now than when you were playing for <laughs> Mickey Thanks. Conlon's here again. 
Thank you very much. Mate, Hi, Sam. Andy. Wayne. Good, Good to be here. <laughs> what's, why, what's the secret to this? Well, I'll tell you what it is. Great mate of mine, Scotty Cummings, yep. went one way. Right. I thought I'm not going that way. <laughs> I'm going the other way. Right. And he's watching right now. Okay, of course yes. he is. Friend of the yeah. show. <laughs> hey, there'll be some, some of the very younger viewers may not remember you as your player. Yep. We remember you when you were in the high 40s when you first started with all that hair that you had. Yep. Back in the day, you were an unbelievably gifted player, raking left footer, classic wingman. Were you always, were you always a wingman coming through your junior footy? Uh, half back, midfield, mostly wing. Just yep. depend. I mean, when I was playing young, younger, at 16 in the Hampton League, yeah, I was a wingman, but petrified. So, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that a bit later on. North Melbourne, a couple of generations before you, and I know you got to know Wayne Schimmelbush really well, and a yep. couple of the all-time great wingmen, Greg on one side, mm -hmm. Schimmelbush on the other. Did you ever speak to them about the craft and the position at this level? Uh, no, no, I live with Shimmer. Uh, good bump that was. It was. Uh, <laughs> Deanie didn't like it because no. he woke up three weeks later. All oh, right. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> no, I just realised all three boys of Carlton. Uh, support. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I didn't. Um, I didn't speak to those guys. I was lucky enough to live with Shimmer for a year and he was a player and a captain that I looked up for a long period of time. But I guess I just tried to play a style of football that I felt was natural to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. it always going to be North, Wayne? No, it wasn't, Sam, because I was zoned to Fitzroy. So oh. how did you not end... Why did you not end up there? Well, Alan Thompson played for Fitzroy, who became a recruiting manager. So three of my teammates at South Warner when the under-18s under um, in 1985 got invited to play and train with Fitzroy. I got invited to train. Right. It got fed back to me that I wasn't good enough. Right. So for the first time in my life, where I'm a camera one, Alan Thompson, I thank you for my career. <laughs> <laughs> I have never forgiven you and forgotten you, and you've motivated me to go on and do what I did. So thanks. Have a, have a big you, Alan. Yeah. Well done. So, so I've never said that publicly. So when did, how, did North, how did North enter the frame? Because Johnny Burns, who played in the 75 or the 77 yeah, yeah, yeah. grand final, yeah. lived in Warrnambool and uh, made a phone call to the Kangaroos. And uh, unbeknownst to me, 1985, I was ready to join the Army. And uh, I came home one day and I said to Mum, I'm ready to go. She said, don't go, give it four more weeks, which was a strange thing to say. Yeah. But unbeknownst to me, Ronnie Joseph and Greg Miller had been coming down secretly during the week mm -hmm. or weeks leading up to that, talking to Mum and Dad and said that we'd like to bring your boy to Melbourne. Right. That's how it worked out. There's very good signs, by the way, that you're, you're going to um, uh, answer our questions sincerely and genuinely. <laughs> I, I say that because I'm, I'm, I'm a bit surprised. You have a history of giving answers to questions and then contradicting yourself straight away, Wayne Schwoss. And I refer you back to the uh, Channel 7 hit segment, Just a Minute. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Here I would be uh, Lee Matthews from Hawthorne. I didn't like anyone from Hawthorne. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, which... Which one was it, mate? I, I love Freddo Frogs, but I don't like chocolate. Well, I'm going to go with Jeff. I'm going to go with what Jeff Kennett said. I don't remember. <laughs> it's like, you, it's it's like a... you failed a concussion test live on television. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time, Andy. <laughs> Still doing it now. Hey, let me take you back. North was the first. Yeah. We talked about the Kings. We'll talk about them a bit. But the '96 Premiership. How tight was this group? A lot of these guys had come through junior under 19 footy together. Yeah. Forged long relationships. How tight was this group? Mike? It's it's hard to put into words, Andy. We we we're an incredibly tight group of players, led by uh, Wayne. And you know, the beauty of that group was that you know, from the youngest player to the oldest player and the most experienced and arguably one of the greatest players ever have played, mm. everybody was made to feel part of it. And it was a special group of players. It was a special group of people that made 1996 a, a, a wonderful year. But I'd also like to say that I think, you know, one of the things that made the club so good during that period for me personally mm. was not just the relationships I had with players. Ronnie McIntosh, Judy Francis, yep. Yep. Um, Jenny Burmeister, Skull. We had great relationships with our, our staff and that was mm. a, beautiful, a beautiful part of what made the football club so good. Yeah. Pre-season uh, camps are getting a bit of a run in the media at the moment. Sometimes. They're not. They're not camps. No. They're not camps like the ones we had, Andy. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I, that's what I wondered. I mean, there's obviously been some negative feedback to a few of them, but um, any wacky things that went on in, by any of the coaches at those? Yeah, wa yeah. We we got uh, sent to Bacchus Marsh yep. for a training camp, three days, mm -hmm. and uh, I can't remember the guy's name who ran it, but it was an old. It was an old sort of zoo, and his name was Shep. That's all we knew. <laughs> and he thought it would be a good idea to get Archer, Stevens, Carey, Martin, Longmire, Swass, Rock, to have a game of basketball. Mm -hmm. And there was, there was, you could have one boxing glove on, and the other hand had to be behind your back, and you could hit your opponent anywhere by the head. 
Right. Well, we didn't hear the head part. <laughs> Blokes were pumped. We got called off in the end. Just got called off. There was brawls going on anywhere. Did anyone... We didn't go back to Bacchus Marsh. <laughs> no. Did no. anyone shoot a goal or, or, or any point? Couldn't tell you the score. <laughs> <laughs> but I got Johnny Longmire three times on the button. Wow. <laughs> Mate, I loved, I loved this look, particularly later on in your career. Um, the, oh, I mean, yeah. Did you forget your shorts that day? And, and this, the, the yeah, untuck. Trick? Untucked. Are they what, on? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was nah. the theory behind that? Obviously, nah. everyone was tucking in back then. And I, what was your theory? I'll tell you the theory. Dennis used to go on about players having their socks up yep. and their jumper tucked in. <laughs> right. I didn't take his advice. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> yeah. No. You know, I, I, it's, that, that was the look. Yep. It was but just the look. Hold on, if it was the look, why was no one else doing it? You were the only, <laughs> you were it was the only my one. look. Yeah, it was your look. I was ahead of my time, Sam. Saying that, you, you stole the look. From? You stole the look from the from Mr Football himself, Ted Whitten. Hi, Ted. I see you're wearing your Jonko football shorts, the shorts worn by the champions. Norman, I've proved that Jonko footy shorts are the best you can play in. Plenty of leg room and comfy around the waist. That's right, Jonko shorts and triple stitch from Fleecy Line Drill. Man, Jonko's tough. Oh, oh. Great, Ted <laughs> Whitten. Sorry, you're, I, yeah, you're not sure we that. needed the close-up of EJ Whitten Jr. there, but... <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, well, we. I mean, Mickey loves that clip, though, doesn't he? I mean, like, if you go back to our, our front uh, uh, Zoom fans, Mickey, yeah, loving it. <laughs> <laughs> his, his, his last opportunity to have the cash cow around. <laughs> hey, we're talking about '96. <laughs> what happened at the end of the season, and I see the Premiership success. I want to ask you um, in a moment about an incident that occurred on the way to that Premiership glory, and you were central to it. Very controversial moment, round 14. 1996. Let's relive it. Wayne Schwass walked straight into the tribunal room and pleaded not guilty to the charge of biting Fremantle's James Clement, despite what appeared to be damning video evidence. Umpire Chris Mitchell told the tribunal he believed the bite was deliberate. But North produced the Frio doctor's report that confirmed there were never any marks or blemishes on Clement's arm. <laughs> <laughs> now, Wayne... What is a man meant to do <laughs> when your opponent is trying to push your teeth to the back of your mouth? Right. There was no bite. No bite? And, no, there was any. No. There was no bite. We brought in a biomechanist. A biomechanist. Who talked to the tribunal yes. about the function of when someone's under real stress in a difficult situation. <laughs> and James Clement is arguably the hairiest man ever to play football. Right. Nice fellow, yeah. but he had long hair on his arms. We just happened to catch a mouthful of hair. That's it. That's it. Got off, exonerated. OK, I challenge the hairiest man in football because we've got the playing card here of Alex Marcou. <laughs> Have a look at those arms. <laughs> you would have been in real trouble playing oh, against yeah. him, Trotter. Suffocated. No, no, it's just unlucky timing for Jimmy Clement. Rim ripping guy, but I'm not a biter. No. No, I have stood on a couple of people once or twice <laughs> in my career, but I'm not a biter. No, no, clearly not. Hey, uh, you were a superstar, and one of the um, one of the challenges that great players have to bear is getting tagged. Players sent out to curb their influence. Yep. You you had to deal with this at the peak of your past. How did you go coping not, with tagging? Not well. Right. Not well at North. Okay. Didn't cope well at, with it at all. Was uh, short-tempered, fiery. Could easily get put off my game, but like to think that when I went to Sydney, I got better at. Okay, so maybe Dennis Pagan can take some responsibility and credit for you learning how to deal with them. Did he? Did he try and help you through your trouble with tag? Is it on the way through? Yeah. Oh, what did he do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You're, you're, you're very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> how did Dennis? How did Rowe took me through the rundown, and this wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> So we're bringing up ghosts of the past, hey, mate. Yes. Well, so the best players got tagged. You should have expected you were going to get tagged, mate. But you would have had help, though, wouldn't they? Would they have, would they have helped you? I, got, uh, I ran out one Tuesday night, Arden Street, middle of winter, and you walk out of the old change rooms, you go down the race, and I've just started to get into a canter, thinking, uh, what's the swap man going to do? Train, train the lights out tonight or just cruise through? I don't know. I was a great trainer. Anyway. Did, did, you, call, did you call yourself the swap man back then? I was third person all the time, mate. Hey, all right. No one else wanted to say. No, so enough. I'm just getting into a trot, and I've just gone out to get onto the ground, and next minute, bang. I'm on my backside. What? I look up and here's Ryan Pagan, son of Dennis. <laughs> and I'm on my backside going, mate, what the bloody hell are you doing? He goes, Swatter, don't blame me. I said, what? He goes, my old man's telling me that I've got to tag you tonight. At training? At training. <laughs> <it's> <laughs> <Tuesday night. laughs> 
I said, Ryan, it's Tuesday. He goes, <laughs> he goes, I know, don't blame me, but Dad thinks this is good preparation for the weekend. Oh, right. I said, I'll deal with it on the weekend. <laughs> Let me go and get a kick. So North Melbourne supporters were pretty parochial and they felt like they were very much part of the campaign. Did yeah. you get any special help from North supporters You'd on the like way through? I think with some of the great warriors that I played with, yep. I would have got support during a game of yeah, football. Yeah, of a chop out. No. Yeah. No, none. Under 19 games. We're playing under 19. We're playing yep. at Arden Street. Yep. Against the Bulldogs, Keith Royston. <laughs> hope he's well. Terrorised me for two years. Couldn't get a kick for love nor money. Right. And this day he's terrorising me again. He has me up against the fence in front of the old grandstand. And Mickey Martin's mum, God bless her, Mary Martin, used to love to sit at the front of the fence <laughs> with her trench coat on and her handbag. Keith Royston's got me bent over the fence and he's given me a head a massage. <laughs> And in the middle of the... And players coming from everywhere, and then in the middle of the blue, you just hear this mature lady's voice, get your hands off my boys! <laughs> Don't touch them! And next minute, this leather bag's just going bang over the top of my shoulder, hitting Keithy Royston on the head. Oh, it's Mick Martin's mum, Mary. <laughs> now, Keith uh, Royston you, on the head. You, God bless her. God that, bless is that, her. But is that true? True story. True well, story. You, you looked down the barrel and you said you hope Keithy Royston's... I hope he's ho well. hope he's well. Because well, when I played against him, I hope he was not well. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you say that to him now, mate? He's right over there. There he is. I the one actually met him at a swimming pool <laughs> and Keith's a nice fella. No, there he is. He's like right there. over there, mate. There he is. Keith <laughs> Royston. <laughs> Good stitch up. <laughs> no, a ripping <laughs> bloke. Yeah. Gone on to have a great <laughs> career post-footy. Couldn't have met a nicer father who I met at a swimming pool a few years ago. <laughs> Very true, Swatter. Yeah. So oh, what you is, two daughters. Is that true then? Did uh, Mick Martin's yeah, mum get you with a, with a handbag? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, I was a Western Suburbs boy and she didn't realise that I'd, I was from Hoppers Crossing. Um, she was from Newport. He was the love of the North Melbourne football side, the <laughs> captain of the under-19s. You couldn't touch Swatter. Um, <laughs> my job was to tag him um, and because he was a left footer, couldn't get back on his right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'd always uh, pick him up and... Uh, she decided that day she would square it up on me. <laughs> That's well, I'd say what. I, ca I can't believe we've got the great Keith Royce. <laughs> <laughs> well, well um, we, yeah, well, we did, uh, you know, Swatter and I both had great careers. Uh, you know, Swatter won a premiership and I went on to win two premierships at uh, Seddon in the FDL. <laughs> oh, so, well, hello, boys. Well, well done, Keith. Well done. Uh, great to have you on the show. It'd be it rude is. to get Keith on uh, coming all this way, just asking one question about an under-19s game. Surely you've got something else for... Keith on the way through. I don't know. It sounds like he had a pretty fair go just then. But <laughs> I, I, I left my uh, questions for Keith Royston notebook at home. <laughs> I got a, uh, yeah, go on, well, you Wayne's going to stick around, but Keith, I got one question. Yes, sir. Do you know anything about growing onions? Keith, <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks oh, for coming mate. in. Good on you, mate. Hey, just want to stick around. We've got more stuff to oh, talk no. to you about. This Indeed. is the front bar. We're here for the brewery, fresh carbon draft. More to come after this. Hey, mate. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Great to have Keith Royston and Wayne Schwoss on the program tonight. Um, Schwatter, magnificent footballer. Your career speaks for itself. Some will argue that the work you're doing post-football career is more significant and more important than what you did even as a player. Tell us about Pucker Up and, and, and how it's travelling. Well, it's been impacted like a lot of businesses because of the impact of COVID. Yep. But the reality is that for a long time, Andy, I've always... Yes, I've always believed in the value and importance of um, mental health and well-being for everybody in the community. Yep. But one of the things that we're fundamentally trying to do, and this is not to be critical of anybody or any organisation that works in this field, and, and Jeff played a significant role with Beyond Blue, but prior to COVID, we, we, we've done the same thing historically for generations in our country and globally with regards to mental health and people who are unwell. And the reality is that if we don't fundamentally change the way that we approach these issues, how can we expect a different outcome? Mm. I, like Jeff, have grave concerns with the, the, the full impact of what happens with COVID mm -hmm. and, and the impact I'm talking about is mental health, people are unwell and tragically people who might be in a situation where they start to think about hurting themselves. So Pucker Up is focused on prevention and the way that we do that is we're currently working on a really exciting partnership with uh, the Centre for Positive Psychology. And what it means really at the end of the day is 
developing programs and and uh, education that gives people the skill set so they can begin to proactively manage their health. Yep. So why wait until we get unwell? Why not equip people with the tools and the confidence to be able to manage their well-being and stay healthy? That's yep. what we do. Uh, it's a great thing. We, we, uh, we put the super up on shore. If, you need to, if you're listening to Wayne and you feel like you're in um, that sort of position where you need to find a way through it, uh, Pucker Up's a great place to go mm. and um, seek some assistance and find a way through it. Uh, one of our favourite segments here, Wayne, is Fresh from the Archives. <laughs> We see players change clubs all the time, yep. all the time. Uh, back in 97, you did that. What we don't see very often is players who swap clubs share the podium when the press conference takes place to announce their switch. You did this with Shannon Grant when you yep. went from North to Sydney and he went vice versa. Yeah. It, how, it, how did this come about? The machinations of that were, was quite... Um, it, it, was, it was amazing, really, because the manager at the time for me was Ron Joseph, yep. also the manager of Shannon. Shannon was wanting to come out of Sydney and come back to Melbourne. I clearly wanted to get out of Melbourne and go to Sydney. The CEO of the Sydney Swans at the time was Colin Seary, yeah. another family that I'd live with. So Ron being Ron had orchestrated, you know, the opportunity. Um, I, flew to, I flew to Queensland at the end of that uh, season to, you know, spend some time working out what I wanted to do. And the biggest issue that I had was I, 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 I was... It wasn't the money, it wasn't the opportunity, it was actually leaving the mates that I'd, I'd yeah. had at mm. North. And I remember my dad was a painter. I rang him up one day, said, I, I want to have a chat. And he goes, what's your biggest issue? I said, I'm worried that I'll lose my mates. And he just very calmly said, your mates will always be your mates. And it was at that, that moment I made the decision to leave. I went and played at Sydney. It, it helped me fall in love with the game again. Yeah, great. I'd like to think I played a better quality of football at Sydney. And North Melbourne got a premiership, Norm Smith medalist, and a, you know, a great player who went on to play 300 games. So it was a great swap. It was definitely a win-win swap, wasn't no, it? Yeah. Yeah, they, no, they, don't, they don't happen that often, although that press conference, it's, it's like breaking up with your girlfriend and then meeting their ex, the next boyfriend. You know what I mean? like that's, that's a bit weird, but um, stay, stay, stay with me, shot. It's going to be all right. Hey, uh, the, uh, you, did mention, you did mention that your time at North had finished... Well, it finished at the end of... One year... After a premiership, and you yep. stand on the day, so one year later, yep. you're you're gone, and you, and it finished with a suspension, and you unlucky. <laughs> oh yeah, mate, Very you, got, you got four weeks. <laughs> Carl Steinford slid under my right foot as I was backing back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Classic Steinford. Um, <laughs> but you got four weeks and you and Glenn Archer missed the preliminary final of 997. Oh, yes. And uh, yep. here, here's, here's, the, here's the scenes at the end of the game, game Wayne. Can you take us through? Well, there's you and Arch standing yeah, at the race. That's the shin boner of the century, which yeah. really embodies bravery, <laughs> selflessness, courage, respect, all of those things. This is Dennis, Dennis. obviously, coming up the Are race. Free Andy. Yeah, well, he, yes. said, he said we missed you. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, he said no. we could have done with it or not. Yes, he looked like that. My theory throughout that whole game, I was reasonably stunned back then, was I said to Arch, I said, if we stay in the race and they happen to lose, he'll come up, see us at the race, give us a clip, walk in and then just torch the blokes that actually lost the game. Mm. The whole time I'm watching Dennis and he's just starting to turn real red, you can just see he's about to explode... And he's walking towards the race. And the whole time I'm sitting there going, it doesn't matter what he says, I've got Arch right beside me. He's going to be right there. He'll say what he says and then get in the race. And as Dennis gets to the bottom race, I happen to look past Dennis, past Corey, past Duck, the shin boner of the century, <laughs> was out on the ground. <laughs> he's done a run. He's done a runner. He left me. <laughs> Dennis started at the race and 15 minutes later he's still getting stuck into me in the roofs. <laughs> the worst torch spray I've ever had, but that led to me going to Sydney. Sam. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you, went, you went up to Sydney and it's always exciting when you play your old club. Uh, and Archer obviously was a good mate and, uh, and he left you out there. This is how you guys met up again. Yep. Oh, that's a solid hit. Yep. Spent the next two and a half quarters trying to square it up. <laughs> <laughs> and he's one of my best mates. Yeah. Has he got you, mate? He got me good, too. Is that, that's a good hit. Before the game, is there any kind of chat, like when you're on the field, were you around each other at all? Is that the very first moment that you guys had met? No, that's just a bloke from Noble Park that's nothing but a thug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a... I mean, but for a few slip-ups here and there, you're a magnificent ball player. I mean, you're Thank all... You. And, that, and the ball players are always rewarded come Brownlow Medal time. Mm. You know, we've always, oh, absolutely, we've always enjoyed <laughs> when it comes to the. You Brown, want, you, you in ninety four, ninety five. You won a best and fairest. You're one of the favourites. Don't Go say it so quickly. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> the only bloke in the history of the Kangaroos to win back to back when Duck was ripping the competition. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Payne? What? 
Travis Old's a mate of mine. He probably doesn't want me to say that publicly, but there's an oversight. I should be in the Hall of Fame for that. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> it's not only a matter of time. Are you in the Hall of Fame? Not yet. <laughs> oh, all the blokes that you hit or stomped on are, though. That's, uh, that's interesting. No, you were, you were in great form. 94, 95, you won Best and Ferris. I, I did. it slowly. Yep. Favourite for the Brownlow in 994. Oh, yeah. But, unfortunately, you couldn't attend, Wayne. Well, one man who's polling very well so far isn't with us tonight. He's in the Fairfield Hospital, suffering from a touch of food poisoning. He joins us now, Wayne Schwoss. How are you going? A lot of your friends are here tonight and watching through Channel 7 around Australia. <laughs> you, did actually, you did actually start at the Brownlow, but you ordered the fish, so... <laughs> um, but they kept, crossing, they kept crossing back to you the, yeah, the whole time. It, it, what, it, what's it, worse, being there in hospital watching it or actually Melbourne. being there at the Brownlow? No, <laughs> no, I'd rather, I'd rather would have been there, but that's not a particularly Melbourne. good look, Andy. Yeah. Um, if you'd won, would a nurse have come on and just put the Brownlow over you? <laughs> what, how would, what would have happened I'm if you'd won? I'm not sure, Pete. I'm not sure. And did you get to the end? Are you seriously watched the whole thing like that? No, I couldn't get. I couldn't wait for the cameras to leave. They yep. left. They left a couple of rounds before the uh, the winner was announced. So you knew you'd lost. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> Andy, <coughs> when the cameraman turns the light off, <laughs> you show over. Mate. You're going. Yeah. Curtains are down. <laughs> yeah. We experience that occasionally at the Logies, where you might be up for something and a cameraman doesn't come anywhere near you as they're about to announce the winner. And Hamish and I have turned to each other and gone, "Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's nice. all over." Yeah, yeah, it's over. Um, you know. It's been wonderful to have you on the show. I, and thank you for answering all our questions, honestly and sincerely. Although, just on that Brownlow <laughs> yes, thing there, yes. mate, the food poisoning that, that, that Bruce, uh, that right. you say you had, or yep. Bruce says you had, I, that's yep. got whiskers all over this story. But luckily, you and Bruce cleared it up. I won't ask you where you ate on uh, Saturday night. No, I didn't eat at all. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I'm no detective, but how do you get food poisoning if you don't eat any food? Because, Pang, I was cook on Tuesday. <laughs> OK. I won't say where the Chinese was purchased from in Northcote, <laughs> oh, but I purchased okay, right, it. Right, right. <laughs> Saturday, Saturday morning, <laughs> yeah. Harry Younglick, the great North Doctor, came out 9 o'clock. I was living with Matty Armstrong, and uh, North gave me two injections. Mate, me mortals wouldn't have played. <laughs> but I played. What's the name of that doctor? And, hang on, Harry Younglick. And for the record... You didn't stomp on him Played as well, that night. <laughs> no, lost by 10 goals. <laughs> yeah. 25 touches. Oh, nice work. Well, it was a happy hey, ending. Schwatter. Happy ending for the Schwab man. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you on the show, mate. Thank good you, to boys. see you looking so good well. Keep, you. keep up the good, good work, too. Yeah, you, right. you guys too. Wayne Schwartz joining us on the show. Great to have you with us. There's no Nicky tonight, so we don't know what's going on with the multi. We'll have a chat here on the break. Come back on the other side of this. Welcome back to the show. This crazy season continues uh, starting tomorrow. We've got some good games to look forward to Thursday, Friday and right through the weekend. That's going to be a great clash. Cats up against the Brisbane Lions. Take note of where these games are. They are dead set all over the shop. Metricon's going to get an absolute pounding this weekend. Lions, Lions f- flag favourite now. They are. Yeah, yep. They're playing good footy, uh, as are the Sainers, of course. They've got... Port Adelaide uh, GWS, that's a good game. That you is know, probably Port game. Adelaide have made Metricon a bit of a fortress. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Very stupid. I don't even know, know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, that actually is that what they've could, been playing? Could be the. Yeah, yeah. No, they have been. Could be the game of the round. So it's very astute of you. Might not be the interesting either. one for this week: the holding the ball decision. Yeah. yeah Obviously, yep. the rules been changed. We have so many rule changes in our very good You're game. A bit of, of a AFL. student of this stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I thought I'd have a look back at some classic rule changes over the ride. First one I want to take everyone back to. 1858, back when we used to love the game. <laughs> love the way they played <laughs> it back then. better football back then. <laughs> yeah. um, not going to do any gags at your expense. Uh, <laughs> Why change now? Why change now? Well, what was it like? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. Uh, <laughs> um, forget short and quarters, there was no time limit on games. Well, it, oh, so they could just go on and on. It was the That's first the team to score two goals was declared the winner. That was it. Really? First team to two goals. It would have been a real okay. issue for this Richmond Doggies game. Round three in 2013. <laughs> have a look at this one. Go out of the middle. And as we get ready to go, well, Dustin Martin's gone to full forward and Adam Cooney at full back. And Delidio storms out of the middle. A vacant goal square was very tempting and he took it up and nailed it through. Half time. <laughs> 
<laughs> go, go to the bar, grab yourself a meat pie. <laughs> you go to the bar, you come back, you've missed an entire half. <laughs> Very good point. Uh, 1950. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm just bouncing around a bit here, but the siren replaced the bell at all venues. Happened. So it was until 1950, some venues still had a bell ding -a -ling -a -ling. instead of a siren. Yep. Um, I like the idea that it was replaced at all venues because the idea that, say, they get a new pope at Vatican City and you hear this. <laughs> <laughs> Just ringing out over St Peter's Square. I like that touch. Good change. Um, uh, 1955, five years later, uh, this one astounds me, boundary umpires were allowed to have a whistle. What, oh, Wait, what year was that? 1955. Really? What were they doing before that? They had white handkerchiefs and they'd wave them. <laughs> what? Wave them? Yeah. It wasn't like throw them up. They'd wave them if the ball went out of bounds. A white hanky? A white hanky. Hmm. Yeah, as if they weren't getting enough flack from the supporters. <laughs> <Not> the <laughs> white handkerchief. Uh -oh. um, we should have done that on this show ages ago. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> wave the white flag and just give it. Uh, but back to when this game started. 1850 to 1888. 30 years this ran for. There was an absence of all umpires. Uh -huh. So captains would officiate the games. Wow. It was up to the, uh, the individual captains. It was a troubling time. I understand why it ended. I've got some footage because some captains were accused of being biased. This is from 1879, uh, Collingwood Essendon. Play on! <laughs> right. How's that for you, Peggy? Yes, that, <laughs> I thought the, that Essendon player looked rather... Uh... Stuart, do you like? Portly. <laughs> a bit portly. Obviously, I thought scurvy was a, like that was that was those days. Obviously, not with that young player. But um, so, so just captains. Captains decided. Yep. Oh, really? It's that's amazing. It's a great novel approach you brought to um, studying some of the oddities of footy. You say I was, novel. Yeah. I say theft. What? Ooh. Uh, as interesting as that was, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you're shamelessly stealing uh, an idea that Michael Roberts had. <laughs> on this very network, okay. his famous Odd Spot segment from back in the 90s. This Odd Spot features one of the strangest reports ever heard by the VFL. In a match between Geelong and South Melbourne in July 1925, Chris Laird of South Melbourne was reported by field umpire O'Hay for pulling the ears of Geelong full forward Lloyd Hagger. The tribunal suspended Laird for six weeks. Hagger got sore ears. Ouch. <laughs> you're a, I, don't, you're a, I don't have the delivery down pat yet. <laughs> you're a poor man's Roberts, and you always have been. Um, but, mate, Ouch. <laughs> uh, no, good stuff. That's great. I, uh, a, lot of people are wondering, a lot of people are wondering what's going to happen with the multi. Because there's no uh, nigger. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've certainly. Yeah. Well, no, what are you going to do? There's some things you don't touch. I'd, I'd go COVID before this. <laughs> <laughs> the multi, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, rolls on. It's no throwing to bits and vision. We've just got a boring old graphic board, but we've got a same game multi for you this week. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have, if you want to have a go, this is what you got to look forward to. Same game, multi. Levi to kick two. Yes. Parity kick two. Like Hold that. on. Sam to get 20 plus. No, you can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> Second half. Second half to be the higher of the two halves. Scoring wise, between need Carlton. The bullies, you have to wait till Sunday night. 31 bucks. Let's hope for all of us that are gathered around this table that I that like pays that. off. Because if that happens, then I reckon Carlton are a fair chance. Let's uh, see what uh, Mick. We've we, we got time to go back to the, the front bar Zoom fans. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he didn't even tune into his own segment. Wow. <laughs> He's impersonating me during a multi. He's very, <laughs> very cute in his natural. How hey, do you get on Mars Multi? Sports bet out. Look for the Mars Multi in the Mega Bet section of the app. Make sure you gamble responsibly. Last shout when we come back. Welcome back to the show, The Last Shout, and it's a tinge of sadness with The Last Shout uh, this week. A couple of. Uh, Towering figures in the world of sport uh, have passed away this week. Alex Chumpy pulling this mm. story uh, was emerged late, a bit earlier on this afternoon, and 
has floored Australian sports fans. A three-time Olympian uh, lost his life in a in a, um, uh, uh, a swimming incident up on the Gold Coast. Superstar today. and yeah. such a lovely fellow. Apparently, amazing natural leader. Yep. When he, and he carried the flag, of course. Yep. And they said that they gave it to him not just because he was a superstar in the sport, but also the way he led it was oh. really important for the for the for the Winter Olympic team. Larger than life he was. So our condolences to his family and friends. And yep. 87 Premiership player Mark Naley from the Blues. Uh, has been battling brain cancer for a while, age 59. This, uh, he this, lost his battle. This was the sealer in 1987. It Murray. was. He played a lot of footy. 236 games for South Adelaide. He was a magnificent player, state yep. of origin footy for South Australia. Played 65 for the Blues, including that one. Uh, he has done just about everything you can do in footy and uh, will be sadly missed. Both of those lads left a significant impression behind. So our condolences to their family Cheers and friends. So yes. uh, a last shout to everybody involved there. Hey, next week on the show, Todd Viney is going to join Looking forward to speaking to him. Santa Chilaro back on the show as well. Mix Good. back as well for people that are yelling at their television. Yeah. Good luck. Is Good he? luck. Yeah, Angus Brayshaw, you've made a very poor decision. <laughs> and everybody in Victoria right, who's watching mate. the show, do the right thing. Let's nip this thing in the bud as quickly as we possibly can and get back to normal yep. as soon as possible. Hey, thanks for tuning in, everybody. See you same time next week. Woo!